Oh, hello everyone and welcome to part two of my coverage of Unity of Command 2 Desert Rats DLC. And oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's gonna be a huge one from Conference 3 to Conference 5 inclusive. And while normally I would consider a video covering nine missions to be a bit of a problem, I simply had to do Crusader this time. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Because it's easily the hardest mission that you'll encounter in this DLC up to this point. And having completed Desert Rats on hard already, I can say that it's comfortably in the top three most difficult scenarios in it. And while I will discuss Crusader in more specific tactical details when we cover the missions themselves, the insidious bit about that mission is that you really forge your victory in it in all of the missions before it. On the one hand, you, just like me, might end up with very beat up crappy units. For example, the New Zealand divisions and actually, this is the reason why I had to restart the campaign once I encountered Crusader. I did. So here is a list of all of the units that are assigned to the 13th and the 30th cores in this mission. So if you see those names in prior scenarios, please try and keep them alive. Preserving their specialist steps and getting them to veteran and elite levels is also a nice bonus. Another important point for Crusader, and this is actually good general advice for this game, regardless of the campaign, is don't be stingy with your HQs. Especially with your Western Desert Force HQ, which becomes the 13th core. Give it additional command points and improvements for critical skills like rear guard, like faint attack, or emergency supply every time you get a chance to. Another exploitable point here, which I think I mentioned in my Moscow 41 videos, is that the amount of experience an HQ needs to level up depends on the number of units that are subordinate to it. So if you've got a very beat up force, but already winning, it's a very easy way to rake in many level ups for your HQs. And Desert Rats offers occasional opportunities to do this. In missions like Crusader, for example. Another important piece of advice that I certainly have mentioned before is not forgetting to scavenge any units that will not participate in any of the future missions at the end of your scenarios. Some of those specialist and reinforcement steps are really expensive and having a reserve or not wasting, I don't know, a Churchill on a unit that is not going to return to your campaign can be decisive in future battles. And once again, Crusader is a brilliant place to do that because most of those units you're never gonna see ever again, while both of those HQs, you will. A lot. Oh, and speaking of the prices of your specialist steps, keep an eye out on your recons. Armored cars can cost as little as 15 prestige per step, which is roughly like two, two and a half less than your average infantry replacement, while having the stats of a motorized division step, in addition to giving all the wonderful bonuses of recon units, and always being the first in line when your brigade sustains damage, once again protecting the valuable main steps. And finally, like in my previous video, I've actually kept a tally of all of the cards you get in these missions. It's up to you how you use them, but if you decide to take the alternative history branch of the DLC, make sure you don't waste your naval bombardment cards because it will be very useful at the end of the campaign. But that's the story for the next video, so let's just look at the missions, alright? Conference 3 begins with Rommel finally coming to North Africa for a little visit. And the inevitable disaster in Cyrenaica kind of spells a lot of trouble for us for the foreseeable future. So rule number one for this and all of the other defensive missions in this chunk is don't expect to stop the Germans. You have the deadlines for your objectives, stick to them. Point number two... Give out as much anti-tank artillery to your units as you can, it's cheap, so load your Australians full of AT. And perhaps give one of those divisions two AT specialists to protect Barche, because remember that you need to hold both Barche and Bichili 
or the entirety of the mission. And the first thing you do in the battle proper is move your mobile forces back to Agidabia. The motorized division should be able to hold it for one turn and send your tank division to the east of the town, just behind that escarpment. You can even eventually entrench it. This will prevent any German incursions towards Tengeda and ultimately Michili from the south. But as the Germans push along the coast, just fall back to your objectives, try not to engage in any combat, and entrench the guys in Sousa and Benghazi. It's actually a good idea to keep your HQ somewhere in between these two objectives, and with the entrenchment, neither of these objectives will be a problem for you. But do keep in mind that the Axis forces will use the road north of Sousa to rush to towards Michili and hopefully take it undefended, so it's a good idea here to use your otherwise rather useless LDRG unit to protect the bridges and slow the Germans down on their way to Michili so that you can send someone to man that fortress. The Germans are not going to have enough time to bring their infantry to Michili, so if there's someone inside, they're not going to be able to take it. I found Barche to be a bit trickier and the AI loves focusing its motorized divisions and air supports on taking the town so do your best. Give maximum entrenchment to AT specialist steps and you are very much likely to hold the town until the end of the mission. Oh god damn it, we're gonna have to retreat again! Welcome to Greece and its disaster. Overall, the mission isn't too difficult, but there are a couple of tricks to it. One, and I've already mentioned that, while not losing too many Australians is the obvious stated objective, there is another hidden one, saving as many New Zealanders as well. You will need them in Crusader, and this means that most of the dying will be done by the Greeks, and that poor armoured brigade that's just useless and needs to be put down. The other trick is in the timing. The Germans once again have superiority in units and their quantities and your real goal here is to obviously hold the objectives for as long as it is required, but also not staying for so long that the Germans are close enough and can gang up on that defending unit and destroy it. Like it's a bad idea except for the Greeks and that tank brigade. So use those um perishable goods, so to speak, in the west of the map, around the choke points at Kalabaka, and retreat the troops from Servia Pass and Mount Olympus as soon as you can, while setting up a bit of a defensive screen at Larissa. It's a good idea to set up a unit with good AC defenses here, and this is where we will first see the use of a technique that I'd like to call screen retreat, and that is giving a rear guard to a unit not inside the objective that you're supposed to defend, in front of it, and in the case of Larissa, that hex on the other side of the bridge. This slows down the enemy and hampers the AI's attempts at actually ganging up on the objective, while still not being able to take it because there's someone in it, but they can't properly attack it. You should essentially do the same thing defending Lamia and Thermopylae. Don't engage the enemy, retreat to these objectives and leave a screen of maybe two units in front of Lamia to defend it and then in the hex on the other side of the bridge next to Thermopylae, which kind of feels like a very defensible place, but really don't risk it. The Germans will be able to shuffle units in and out and take some of the losses and actually take Thermopylae and inflict lots of losses on you. It might actually be a good idea to also hold the hex west of Thermopylae to make it more defensible, but still retreat to Levazia and probably Athens, even though if you are successful, you will not have to go that far in this mission. So, defense of Tobruk is the historical continuation of the disaster in Cyrenaica, and it is at the same time similar and different from that mission. You are still very much the underdog in this fight, but unlike Cyrenaica and partially Greece, you can actually kinda stop your enemy. The obvious initial bit of advice is don't hold anything west of Tobruk proper, and in and around Tobruk, pay attention 
attention to two main hexes. This is Pyramid 2 and El Adam. Geographically, Perimeter 2 is the least defended hex of all of the ones that you need to hold, so make sure that by the time the Germans come, there is a strong AT equipped entrenched unit there. If Perimeter 2 is too hard to take, the Africa Corps will push through El Adam, so mount your best defenses there. I recommend leaving a motorized division there because of its better defensive stats, plus obviously doing all of the entrenching and AT and whatever other steps that give defense that you can muster. There are four more points of secondary importance. First, the hex in front of Perimeter 2, just behind the ridge. Leave a weak unit there like your tank division. It's a difficult hex to cross from the north and it will slow the enemy advance along the coast. Also check the fortress southwest of Tobruk. It's a good and easily defensible place to distract the Axis forces, especially since once they take it, it becomes a source of supply for them. Also note the road east of the fortress and the little escarpments that you can use once again as a defensive line, blocking any possible flanking attacks with a weaker unit. You can also potentially use units in this area to do a mad dash towards the west and sacrifice them and slow the Germans down once again. And finally, don't forget about the perimeter 4 hex. The attackers are very likely to breach Aladdam on the last turn and if Pyramus 4 is not manned, well, it'll get taken. Just leave someone, someone useless in there. Usually it's the beast up tank brigade. Oh no, haven't we taken Karen before? Well... Our throws to Karen, apparently the Italians pushed us back. And now we have to take the town good and proper in Battle of Karen. Like in so many smaller siege-themed scenarios, the strategy here is that of specialists. Make sure to give your units engineers and artillery. I didn't do it this time, but double artillery would totally work here. Your Gurkhas can also be a game changer here for additional bonuses and fewer losses, so that you can comfortably take all of these four initial objectives by the end of turn two. And one of the tricks here is to remember that none of them are in cities, which means that you can use suppressive fire with impunity and maybe combining them with set piece attacks because they force the enemy to retreat. All in all, by the end of turn one, you should hold two of these objectives. In my case, it was Mount Samana and Fort Dolgoradok. I blasted them with artillery and kicked out the defenders, moving up and repeating that same story with the other two objectives, so that by the beginning of turn three, three hexes around Karen were occupied by my units with artillery in them. And you can guess where it goes from there. A couple of set-piece attacks render that unit completely suppressed or forces it to retreat to the east, and you can take Karen early, which means they can pretty confidently blitzkrieg the rest of the map, connecting with the guys in the north and then pushing towards Masawa. Remember that the guys gazing is are green, so it's not going to be too big of a problem. And then as you kick out any Italian stragglers from the railway, bunch up your forces around Asmara and take it. Somewhat appropriately, Ethiopian Blitz kind of reminds you of some of the missions you play as the Germans in this game, except that you guess uh, two and a half soldiers and most of East Africa is empty already. So obviously, logistics is going to be your bane in this one. And there are two things you need to keep in mind that aren't too obvious. One, listen to the briefing and use a truck card on the motor pool ability of your HQ. I actually did not know how this feature worked before this mission. So what it does is give all of the infantry units belonging to that HQ the motor pool ability 
for the entirety of the mission. This is incredibly powerful, as you can imagine, and it's something you really need for your Ethiopian Blitz if you are to take everything on time. So go ahead and use that bloody card right off the bat. The second little potentially confusing point is Berbera and the reinforcements you get there. That's right, it's not just a spot for you to drop reinforcements in once you take those hexes. There will be a full-blown naval invasion there, and because Berbera is a port, it will be a very convenient location for you to bring supply to the north of the map. Beyond that, the mission is very easy. Use your westernmost division to take all of the objectives in the south of the map. Keep an eye on its supply, but otherwise they'll be able to kick out those Italian troops. Push the rest of your forces north towards Jijiga and Hara. The defenders there are pretty weak, and the main challenge is in actually guessing there on time. The only relative challenge is once you take Hara and Diadawa, there's usually the Italian HQ and all of the stragglers obstructing your push towards the Wash and the Disababa. So forget about that railway between Diadawa and a wash and use the little road in the mountains. If you take all of the other objectives on time, your motorized division should take well, all of those western objectives because they're completely empty. You might need to bring your HQ close to business and give emergency supply, but otherwise those objectives are not going to cause you any more trouble. Ambalagi is this next step after the Battle of Karen, and in a way it's kind of similar to it. Even though you get to move around a little bit more, the ultimate and most difficult bit in the center is still that fortified enemy, and your hardest task will obviously be to destroy these guys and take those objectives. So as it usually is with these siege slash destroy fortifications missions, these are specialist step missions. The northern push is going to be decisive here, and luckily Adi Ugri gives you an engineer step, and so ideally if you bring two infantry brigades with artillery and engineers to Valaga Pass, Ambolag, etc., you're pretty much going to be set for the mission. Just keep in mind that the engineers are always the first step that dies if you sustain any losses, so you might actually want to save your engineer troops for Falaga Pass and Umberlagi. You're really not seeing most of these troops ever again, so this is the last mission in East Africa. So feel free to push past losses and get your best equipped, unscathed troops to Umberlagi and Falaga Pass. Don't expect to rely too much on your motorized brigade, because being a motorized unit, it cannot launch set-piece attacks. So while it's kind of useful in Adiugri and Adwa, its best application in the center of the map is to repair the bridge west of Amberlagi and just push your motorized brigade through there. It will not be particularly useful, but it could disrupt the Italian HQ and perhaps hopefully deal some damage to the guys in Ambalagi. The push from the south is absolutely secondary. You will have to rely on the emergency supplies there, but if you do manage to bring, once again, an engineer, artillery, strong units to Ambalagi from the south, it's absolutely great and it will be instrumental in taking that objective, which, let's not forget, is absolutely the hardest in this entire mission. Oh, and killing the units holed up in there surrenders all of the Italian units in the area, but unlike other missions, it's probably not going to be too useful because this objective will fall last in almost every case. Oh, hello there. Welcome back to Compass 2. I, I, I mean, Exports. Oh, who cares? Exporter is another one trick mission, and that trick is exactly the same as in Compass 2. If you take Beirut and its tantalizing book icon, which I'm suspecting is a menu, the Vichy French forces will take a little break for a little bit of 
Cock of all. And getting to Beirut as quickly as possible should essentially shape your preparations for the mission. Give those Australian divisions crap loads of firepower so that they can launch incredibly powerful suppressive fire and set piece attacks. As you can see, double artillery engineers are all fair game here. And once they're all equipped, just push north. It's a good idea to take the hex east of Sidon. If you get it early with your double artillery unit, you will be able to launch set piece attacks all around it. And you can reasonably expect Beirut to be yours in five or six turns. And while the Vichy French surrendering makes your life in the east much easier, you actually need that manpower near Damascus, which you are very unlikely to take before Beirut. You actually need enough forces and movement points to go through all of those stragglers and take the city yourself. So equip that Indian division. Remember that the French can't fight, at least in this mission. Take Dara early and then approach Damascus and stay close to it, ready to rush and take the city. Even though I've moaned enough about Crusades and how it forced me to restart the campaign, it's actually Battle Axe that is a more frustrating mission if you otherwise do things right and prepare well. The Axis counterattackers are really powerful compared to the trash you've got, and you really need to manage this offensive defensive scenario somehow and not lose it. <laughs> so on your first turn, go ahead and capture all of the initial objectives, including Hellfire Pass. It's not so difficult. It's a good idea to send your strongest and best equipped units to protect Hafid Ridge and Fort Caputo and the Hex just west of Hafid Ridge uh, to maybe exploit the defensive bonuses of the Ridge. Well, and giving a rearguard to the guy sitting there because the AI loves that Hex. Obviously protect the actual objectives with counter-attack tag. Another point of interest is CDMR, and this is the first time we'll see the famous, the famous double artillery motorized brigade. Send them into the town, which pretty much guarantees that the Axis will not attack us, but they will sure as hell send some of their best divisions to potentially maybe take CDMR. This means that on turn two, you will be able to launch suppressive fire attacks on some of those best tanks that the Germans have, and obviously destroy their units. This is the best way for you to actually sap the enemy's ability to do any effective counterattacks here. You really just need to survive here for a couple of turns. And another thing that you can do is sending some of those crappier tank brigades, which you're not going to see ever again, towards the brook, scaring the Axis and forcing them to divert some of their motorized units. And that's pretty much the strategy for the mission. Hellfire Pass Coast is not going to be too difficult of an objective to take, and you really don't need to hold it. And finally, there's no reason for you to push Solomobardia, holding them is not going to improve your life in any considerable way. Alright, and finally it's time for the big nasty, the Crusader mission, which feels like Battle Axe on, really not steroids, more like yeast. And while those objectives feel and really are all over the place, your main goal for the first three turns of the mission will be to destroy the German-Italian mechanized units, and pretty much you should use your lessons from Battle Axe. Remember the beautiful double artillery motorized brigade? Well, it's back, and you should do the same thing with it, sending it somewhere west of City Omar and giving it counterattack on first turn. And as it scares off the Axis attackers, inevitably coming from the northwest, you will be able to launch devastating suppressive fire attacks on the German tank divisions later. Another important point is the section between Sidi Omar and Solom. The AI is really instructed to defend these hexes and will rush a bunch of his troops to retake them if you capture them. So sending your infantry there and giving them rear guard is a brilliant idea if you want to blunt the Italian and German counterattack on turn one and two. Also, while you should push your better mechanized units of the 30th Corps far to the northeast, try not to expose your weaker units too much, especially the infantry that the 30th Corps has, and don't shy away from using your rear guards because your ultimate goal here here in the first three turns to preserve as much of your own forces 
while destroying grapplers of Italian and German forces. And once that happens, essentially around the third turn, push all the troops of the 30th Corps to the north and the west, especially west. The 13th Corps will take care of the eastern objectives and feel free to encircle things like Cisiomar. The 30th Corps should push forward towards Gazala, send a strong tank or motorized units with counterattack to Sidi Razeg, and move most of the rest of your forces towards Beerhaheim. At this point, it's a good idea to consolidate your supply hub in an area where the 30th Corps starts, creating a level 3 supply hub and moving your 30th Corps HQ as far as forward to the west as possible. You will have to rely on emergency supplies a lot from this point on. And from this point on, given that the Axis ability to quickly react to your attacks and pushes is no longer there, you should quickly encircle Bierhaheim and push towards Timini, completely cutting off the entirety of the Italo-German troops in the area. It might also be a good idea, once it's feasible, to connect your southern push with Tobruk, somewhere in the area between Tobruk and Bierhaheim, because Tobruk is a port and is a good place to set up a more convenient supply hub, at which point taking the rest of the objectives shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's going to be very basic infantry combat in the east. And speaking of infantry combat, the reason why you shouldn't rush those infantry units of the 30th Corps right off the bat into the battle is that being infantry, they're kind of useful at Bierhaheim. And because you have crap loads of tanks in the area and that objective being a village, it's sometimes a bit tricky to take. So pay particular attention to that. Good luck. And this is it for today. At this point, we're roughly three quarters into the campaign, which is just beginning, really. Because in the last part, we are going to have actual divisions and not just pathetic brigades. Until next time, cheers.